Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Fateless Podcast episode. Going to be joined by Sham and Dane today for this discussion. And what we want to do for this one is keep you up to date with how the workflow is going. Are we ahead of schedule, behind schedule, on schedule, and just kind of bring you in to discuss that. So I will pass it over to Sham uh, as the uh, as the lead game director here to get us started. Yeah, so uh, we thought this was kind of would be an interesting discussion. Talk through some of the things that we you know, that we've been working on, talk through where we are in the, in the timeline, in the pipeline, um, and, and how things, you know, are, are what we expected, what we didn't expect. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good, it's a good reflection point since we just moved into uh, what's called, you know, the actual production. We, we just got through pre-production. Um, but yeah, to, to kind of talk about where we are and how things are doing generally. So we had that kind of like two years, about two years is what we were, we were kind of thinking for, for how long this would take. We had a, a you know, a discussion with Magic Media. And then we broke those in that that estimate, or it was broken down rather into pieces with some you know leeway for obviously things some t- them, some things take longer than you than you expect, so you just kind of add in some time. But yeah, so pre production went you know just about yeah just about as long as as we expected, and we've moved now finally into production. So meaning you know we established uh, an art bible, we established the the base uh, basics for our for our character pipeline our art pipeline our development cycle uh, our QA you know we've, we've we've already started doing some 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 QA on the the super early you know bare bones uh, prototype and we're starting to get uh, core mechanics in so uh yeah but ba- basically all I can really say for sure is that yeah pre-production went went really well we've got you know so many things established so many things figured out um, in some ways, I think we we are we feel I, some places I feel like we're way ahead. Some places I feel like okay, we're we're just about where we should be. Some places it's like oh, we need to, to work on this, but it pretty much feels like it's it's evening out, which is is good because Magic Media is quite experienced with uh, with figuring out how long these things are going to take, and and obviously you know we have experience from previous endeavors. So yeah, it's feeling it's feeling good. But um, but Dane, how do you, how are you feeling about it? What what, what do you feel from from the, on the art side? I think one thing we're behind on is podcasting where you leave a break for someone else to jump in on. <laughs> like that's sort of a never gap, a gap in our development cycle. Um, <laughs> there is a tendency, I think, when you work with others and you've worked on previous similar projects to treat it like a relationship. You know, when everyone breaks up and gets in a new relationship, it's very cliche to think you're in a rush to get to where you were before to that same level of familiarity and let's say output. Um, that part doesn't line up very well as a metaphor, but um, <laughs> don't think about it too much. Um, so working with magic media, they have a great portfolio. They have a lot of experience and you look at all the stuff they've done. You're like, this is all triple a great stuff. And then as you try to work through your designs and your ideas you're not immediately getting those results and it can be very frustrating because you're like i know you can do it and we're giving you all the tools you need so where's the schism like the rift between and it just takes a while to work out um so in the process of doing it it can be frustrating i think we're actually very much on the timeline and the timeline that they predicted um sometimes it feels a little bit like I don't want to say lip service or hand waving, but you're kind of like, come on, come on. But we're starting to get really, really good results down results that are really um, where the initial efforts in terms of character designs or environment designs are so much closer to our core concepts that that's extremely encouraging. And, you know, and, and, and it's ramping, it's like getting, I wouldn't say exponentially, <laughs> that's crazy. It's getting linearly <laughs> more rapid in terms I mean, of how I don't know I don't know maybe I I feel like it might actually feel yeah I mean it's probably still I'm not linearly. a math expert I'm it's not. probably still <laughs> linearly okay if you just look at the at the, at the yeah. real numbers but it's but it will feel like when someone is talking about you know oh it's exponentially better or whatever I feel like it'll feel like that once we get through kind of some of the you know some of the pieces for for or, or, or the the ways that we're building these characters uh and maybe you can talk a little bit about that process then that, that would be kind of an interesting thing to to talk about um, will really speed up, right? So you know, we have several several hundred characters that we plan to put out, right? We don't have, we won't, we won't say the exact number here, but we have we have several hundred that we have planned, and uh, 
you know, and we haven't we haven't finished, you know, like a bit less than raid, yeah, but a bit more than Mario Kart. You do the math. <laughs> you do the you do the math. Yeah, Mario Kart is like what eight or something? Ten. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't want to. Somewhere not, we're not the original numbers, was George. eight or ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. But but yeah, I mean, like if you look at though, if you look at where we're at, you're like, oh man, there's so many more to do. But we're starting to build that that lexicon that 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 library that huge list of things that we can kind of like um get in and and adjust and and twist and change to make to make making those characters that process much easier even with the really bespoke really cool really high level legendary characters like it really does feel like it's 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 starting to speed up it's starting to speed up it's specifically on the characters right because there's there's a lot more than just characters there's bosses yeah. there's backgrounds there's ui there's all kinds story, of story sound engineering animation yeah yeah exactly um, big story yeah that's right exactly um but on, on the design side brad so now that you've uh now that you've moved over kind of like officially to the design side how are you feeling about that how, how are you feeling that that process is going and maybe talk about that transition yeah it um <laughs> it's definitely it's a lot different than what you think it's going to be like coming into it you're like Oh, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to get to design some fun characters and some fun bosses. And this is going to be awesome. But you don't realize how much groundwork there is before you can get to that point. Because, like, how do you even start designing a champion? You have to come up with, well, what are the buffs and the debuffs? How does turn meter work? What's the math behind all this? How many turns does everything last? And then you have to get multiple people to agree on all these things. Because different people have different perspectives and, and want different things. And there is, I feel like, the first like six months is the hardest part because once you get the foundation built, now we can start really cranking out champions we like and bosses be like, but it's really, it's, it's not like harder. It's just more um, to do than I thought it was going to be in terms of laying the foundation, but it's definitely a lot of fun, uh, you know, doing it. It's, it's a challenge, but a fun one. But how's that creation from nothing feeling that, that that's, I would say that that's my favorite. This is my favorite time in, in the cycle, right? Because at some point, we will have established this is at at the core the 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 lore this is you know um who these characters are this is the number of characters we have this is the way bosses are designed and that point that part is cool like that's pretty fun for me but for me and, and, and i'm interested to hear from both of you uh that from nothing feeling making something from nothing is by far the coolest thing but that's that's what that's what gets me up in the morning like at at 4 30 like like dane <laughs> but dane what well, yeah dane for, that's, that's me getting up just to make our meetings with all these <laughs> european guys um, don't get salty about it well i'm just no i'm just saying it's the reality of it um sorry i live in a great well hydrated state that's, that's what happens um, oh goodness the it's it's kind of like that this creation from nothing right because we've worked on completely original IPs before. And that's really where you're constantly checking your own sense of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Derivativeness and your own, the things you want to see and you want do you want to see them because you've only seen them somewhere else and you enjoyed it in a different game or movie or something. And what can you bring? Like, what are you bringing that's new versus what are you bringing that's just, oh, I, I also want to be someone that makes you know, a design like that or a character like that. Like, I wish I was, I invented Vampire Henry D. He's so cool, but I can't now because someone else already did it. Or I wish, I wish I got to spend time drawing ridiculous, like overly sexual characters like Red Monica from Battle Chasers. But now the sure. cultural t the temperature is not in, really in love with that anymore. And everyone else back then got to get away with it because that was the 80s no and the 90s. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of that. There's a little bit of like, oh, I just wasn't prominent enough. But I also want, I like those kind of character designs and I didn't get to do it. Um, in our case, with our gods, heroes, myths, and legends, it's not really from nothing, right? We're, we're, we are working off um, a big bank of sort of like cultural knowledge. So what I, I, mean, I agree with you, what's exciting here is that we already know that everyone knows who like Hercules and Zeus and Quetzalcoatl and in some cases Musashi or something is like, so how we use that kind of built-in knowledge, Simon kind of said it earlier, I know I'm jumping around with my sentences, but 
Simon said it earlier when we were doing um, AK Hell Hades, our art sync review with uh, Magic Media, the production studio, that what we're really looking for here is like cliche, but cool. He, he might've said cool, but cliche, but I, th I think it, it's meant to be flipped. Like we're fine with being cliche. We want to hit all those notes that everyone recognizes and is basically looking, anticipating, looking forward to once they understand the core conceit of our game. But then they want to be surprised. It's the same with horror movies, it's the same thing with humor. You want to understand the setup and then you want to be surprised. Right. And we were, that's the part where, like we say, like I get up in the morning, like, how can we make this happen? The stuff I'm thinking about, like, how can we make a Zeus that someone looks at that, like, oh, what? Oh, wait a minute. I get it. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, like referential and cool and exciting and and fresh and and also don't forget it's got to fit in our our our, our world right. you know there's all these constraints and and like chains that you you are shackled down by but those things are actually i don't know they're they're exciting in their own right cuz like yeah you could just you could just draw in in a vacuum any of these characters that we're going to we're going to make and it would be like yeah that was a cool take on it and it could be different but making them come together and fit together is kind of like this. It's almost like we get to make something, but it's also we get to do puzzling all day. You know what I mean? And I, and I think that that's, you know, we we really get to see that. Of course, we see that in design, right? There's almost no, there's you know, that's kind of a no brainer. There's so many puzzle pieces we have to bring together for the economy and for mechanics and for, you know, difficulty curves and all, all that kind of stuff. But even for like art and environments and backgrounds and lore, it's the same thing, right? It's, it's kind of like, okay, now that we've set these constraints for ourselves, these myths and legends, and we've got this base concept for a story, how do we bring in, how do we bring in the lore, you know, that, that, that fits and makes this character cooler and make that character look like it fits with that. It's like, we, yeah, like, I don't know. That's, that's what really excites me is, is taking all those puzzle pieces, putting them together and then making them. And, and like you said, not from, not from nothing, but from uh, kind of like this, this shared understanding that we're hoping that people will, will, or this shared uh, reference that people will, will quickly get, but then they'll be like, Oh, that's a cool take. I get it. And that's a really cool, that's a cool take. And it looks cool. Right. Obviously we want this. Like I get it. Stuff. And now I want to see what you guys have done with it. Yeah. And it better be good because, <laughs> because be I good. Already, I've already seen versions of this. Yep. Uh, I was listening to some other podcasts recently, old one. Um, Shout out to Skill Up. It's a good. It's a good channel oh. about Diablo Four, and Diablo Four had a lot of controversy. And I think one of the, the big things that stood out on a technical level, there's so many things. I mean, just, no one cares about Diablo Four anymore. I don't think. But I think one of the big, like no, no one's talking about. It. And I'm sure people are still playing. Lots of people yeah, are still yeah. playing, but it's not like um, a topic of controversy or news. Really, it's, it's just it's just out there now. Yeah. One of the big issues that they were talking about that I think applies a lot to the experiential version, like kind of aspects of our game was the normalization of enemy levels. Mm. And they were saying that one of the kind of core experiences in a ARPG loot crawl, dungeon crawler type game is those periodic spikes where it's, 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 it's where either a spike where it's either too hard and it's really hard to progress. You're trying to figure out what you can do. Then you get a sweet drop. And for the next two to three hours, you feel like a god. Um, and they're saying that in Diablo 4, which I have not played extensively, so I'm just taking this as hearsay, that it's so normalized that you, you never get those spikes. Everything feels very designed and very even and consistent. Mm -hmm. And that while sometimes that introduces too much, let's say, aggravation or difficulty, it also introduces when you don't have that these spikes of power and you feel amazing because you found something and yeah. it's, they think it's to its detriment that that's missing from Diablo four. Um, and I bring that up because we're talking about creativity within parameters and having yeah. both because we talk about all characters and stuff. I usually, I'm on the art side. So I'm always just thinking about that stuff. But, but when you talk about progression curves and levels and stats and stuff that you guys have spent a lot of time on, that's not a sexy thing to talk about because it's all math, <laughs> no. you know, but, but players will notice if it's wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah. they'll definitely notice if it's not right. They won't notice if it is right. 
which is a kind of a thankless task. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's one of those things, you know, and 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 Brad can hop in on this actually because you you know, and you can talk about some of the stuff you've been doing with bosses a little bit, but yeah, it's one of those things where you want to start with the numbers, right? And and you start with like, okay, well, we want this balanced ish, or we want this balanced, you know, in a way that feels comfortable, and then you're going to end with that, like you said, that experience, like like you, because it's it's like not a progression curve, like okay, we want it to be exactly at these increments. We actually want we want to design in some of what you're saying so that when you hit certain milestones, there's a, there's a big spike and you feel the power of your, of your team, your character, you know, whatever's, whatever's happening change. Cause if you don't get that, like then what are you even playing for? People want to play for progression. They want to, they want to, you know, get something sweet, get a new character, get a new uh, uh, weapon or relic, get a new, whatever piece of gear near a new gear set is filled out a new, whatever. And then all of a sudden they can go do something more. They can do something more that they couldn't do before, or they can do something much faster or, or more easily. And that's kind of, um, that's another fun thing, obviously is like, is like kind of, it's kind of getting that, getting the first pass on that is like actually extremely difficult because you, because you, you sit, <laughs> you, you get paralyzed. You're, you're sitting there and you're like, how do I make any decision without knowing all this other information? And the answer is you just, you just make it up. You just guess you straight up. I mean, maybe there's, you can, you can be like, well, I'll just, I'll just uh, take some, I'll take, uh, you know, some percentage of this because this feels about right. You just start plugging numbers in you start and like, you just sort of take this big lump of clay and you start, you know, molding it and kind of shaping it. And you're like, Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to adjust that. And, and, uh, and yeah, so, so like, you know, what we're working on and I guess to go back to our, what our discussion is really about is like, where are we in the pipeline? What are we up to? How are things progressing? You know, right now we're at that molding, molding the clay uh, uh, phase, right? We're doing a lot of molding. Like we, we've thought about a lot of these, maybe a little bit further, right? We've thought a lot about a lot of these systems. We have some baseline for almost everything at this point, I would say. Yeah, 80%. Let's call it 80%. We, we, we have some baseline for 80% of the stuff that we have to do. And now it's like, okay, now let's make this look nice, feel nice play nice and and starting to get to you know uh, actually getting to try the game <laughs> we're getting we're getting real close to being able we're doing a little bit of that but it's still very high level like stuff doesn't quite work the way it's 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 going to for for you guys in the future but, but Brad talk about about you know what you're what you're up to in the in that yeah. process yeah uh you know like I'll be in calls with people trying to design bosses and stuff and what you learn is there's so much chicken versus egg scenarios like like which came first and which to do first there's so many of those like i'll be in a call trying to design a boss and it's like well how can i design the boss until i know what buffs and debuffs we have in the game well how do we know what buffs and debuffs we're gonna have in the game until we know what we need to solve for and, and like and there, there's so many thousands of things like that <laughs> uh that make it tough to be like i can't do this well until i know this well you can't do that until you know this you can't do this so it, it just becomes you know going in circles until like you said you just have to start you have to get the clay going um yeah. but i was a i was a content creator for diablo 4 so i can speak a little bit to what dane was talking about to, to close that circle yeah the normalized levels the reason they did that is so that you know i can be level 78 and i can jump in with sham who's level five and be like hey so what would happen is like when i hit the boss i'm hitting a level 78 boss when sham hits the boss he's hitting a level five boss but we're both fighting the same entity and yeah. so they do that so that you can play together no matter what level you are I hated it personally. I, I would rather, you know, be like, hey, Sham, you're a little bit weak for this area, but I'm going to I'm going to help you power level and yeah. then I'm going to feel strong and he's going to feel weak. But then someday, three days from now, Sham's going to now be strong and be, you know, leveling up Dane and be like, hey, you know, now I'm strong. It, that's a little bit more RPG to me. Like but I was spinning hate... to win. That's yeah. what I, would be doing. <laughs> I, I, I would hate in Valheim. I like I, I like going back to the meadows and be like, oh, dude, I one shot everything here. Like I would hate it if it was normalized. Like, like yeah. the meadows is just always the same difficulty. I, I, so I was always against that in Diablo four, just to kind of close out what Dean was talking about. Yeah. It's one of those things that there's so many things that sound great on paper. And then when you try it, you're like, ugh, what is this? Right. Oh, and actually the reverse is sometimes true where you'll be like, oh, that's, that's going to be a terrible system. And then you, and then you try it out and you're like, oh, actually that's pretty cool. Like this is, this is way better than I thought it was going to be. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I guess the, 
the hard part and the fun part about what we're doing right now is there's a lot of trying things and seeing how they feel, right? So, so we, we, like like with with bosses, for example, we got to start. We figure out that what's their defense, what's their HP, how hard do they hit, what do their moves do? Is that going to be fun? I don't know. Take some guys in, see what see what it feels like. You know, you can kind of you can figure some stuff in out in your mind. Um, and you think that it's going to, it's going to work a certain way. And I would say 60, 70% of the time you're just wrong. Like, it's like, oh, well that was way harder or easier than I thought it was going to be. Or that was, that wasn't, that wasn't that fun. But what's cool is that, is that we're at the phase. So like Diablo four, I don't know at what stage that decision was made. Like, oh, Hey guys, we're going to, we're going to normalize it because we want, we think, I mean, my guess is that the thought was, okay, we think that it's really important for, for people to be playing. Some people are going to be like super hardcore. Other people are going to be playing, you know, not that much. We want them to be able to play together. Right. And that concept sounds cool, but as, as, as you're kind of saying it, it, it just kind of, it normalizes the the game and normal isn't really fun. Maybe that, maybe that's really what it came, came down to. Right. No, like people only are excited about having, you know, money or things or, or, you know, items in these games as compared to others for the most part, right? Or at least as compared to the, to the progression curve. So if you're playing so, a solo game, you want to feel like, oh, I'm really strong now. This is fun. Or, oh, I'm not, I'm really weak now. I need to go grind to get, to get better so I can then feel good, right? Um, or if it's like a multiplayer game, I want to show Dane how awesome my spin to win is, right? Obviously, it's amazing. I want to show Dane how how awesome it is, but that that's all, like we're talking about Path of Exile. Well, Path of Exile. Like my last it's, a, it's it's basically every all these are ARG Gams all got his uh, no, last Epoch spin well, to We had that or... exact that exact moment when I was at your house. There's always spin. Oh, that's right. I, I showed exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm like I don't even play this game, Jeff. Like no, check out my <laughs> that guy. Is such a look, funny what I, look what I can do. I can teleport oh around God. and kill everything. I'm just watching numbers all over the screen. <laughs> check it out. It it. Uh, I have no doubt that the people at Blizzard and whoever worked on Diablo 4 wrestled with all these yeah. decisions. Yeah. And they're like, this makes co op easier. Maybe it makes single play too linear and maybe a little bland. Yeah. The, you, and they, I'm sure they, because anything we can think of immediately, they have got people on the team that obviously are also thought of that. Like well, oh well exactly. maybe make a Hundreds ten level them, probably <laughs> a ten yeah a ten level limit between if you can join a pr- other person's game or not and maybe you've juiced that character with wh- you know whatever mailboxing or st- yeah I haven't played Diablo in a while no, but right. you know there's all sorts of ways to kind of and like is that a solution and you know they play test it and so they arrive at that thing it is what it is um so the progress like that and if we're talking about how far are we along with the game and how happy we are we are with the pace and the development is kind of hard to say you know i think we're happy with the progress but we fully realize that there's so much stuff in let's say just the numbers and the design and all the curves of advancement and frankly also in just the way characters like move and look and exist in a world it's really hard to say yeah this character looks great let's see him do a thing oh like, mm. now, now they, they look really weird when they have to do that animation. I don't know if I like this design anymore, but I didn't know. Until dude, that Leonidas animation. <laughs> uh, with his man boob. Yeah, dude, we, we got uh, we got this animation back and it was literally designed to test the 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 skinning, right? The way that the bones um, deform the mesh as as the as things move around. So if you think about what your skin does when you go like this, it's going to stretch. It's going to stretch like my chest. It's going to stretch my arm in a certain way. Right. And that's all essentially built in like coded not exactly coded in but it's 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 painted in effectively like it, it um it, there's different weights i guess that are that are assigned to the amount that a bone will deform uh, a mesh like your elbow will never never influence your knee exactly but your elbow should influence your chest and your roots yeah yeah but but so so he does like this so in the animation he kind of does this jump and he lands and you're like oh that looks pretty sweet and <laughs> and then he does he does like I don't even know. I'll show you guys what I think it is. Like, yeah, but we can't see. I'll see you. Yeah, he does like this, and you're like, <laughs> wait, what? What is? Yeah, he and, does like an anime punch you into the sun. 
pose. Yeah, like a we- <laughs> the Hadouken. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. Well, there's like a little Shrek glint, a little glint in the sky after they launch someone. But then, he, then you know, it wasn't quite. It wasn't quite right. Uh, and and but what, but you know, Dane and I are like, what's going on with? Here? Yeah, that's not how that's not how pecs do, <laughs> my dudes. Um, it was okay. We're familiar with this. We we dealt with that in Carnet yeah. too, with the waiting of. But that was one in particular. Like, well, I think the the full pec should be more tied to the shoulder. Yeah. You know, so when you lift your your arms up, your chest moves with it. And you, you probably on the female characters don't want that as much because you don't want someone to like reach above their head and then have one breast I, way above I, the other. You know, that's like not how sitting up def- here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that. so there's just artistic considerations and, and that's a step. That's a step actually we had not talked about so much on this project yet. The weighting of vertexes and UVs and Yep. Oh yeah, that's another one. It's going to be part of it. Got to figure that out too. And Magic Media, you know, they know what they're doing, but they don't always know what we want them to be doing. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. And, that's and, the and core that, bit. And like, I, I feel like you know, one of the other things we probably want to just what we could discuss here is like, you know, what's what's been kind of like surprising, you know, easier or more difficult than we kind of expected it would be. And I would say that that's that that's one where I'm kind of in the middle. Like, I think for some things. We knew, so we knew that working with Magic Media was whenever you work with with any anyone else, and it's not just like an internal team. Obviously, there's going to be latency and communication. There's there's all kinds of things that you just know are going to be are like known, right? And and I would say overall, I've been pleasantly surprised with the amount with the speed at which we're able to to get things done, right? So you know we've got we've got um, amazing producers like shout out to to Laz to Lazaro and to Yulia, like. These guys deal with a lot. Like they have, they're setting up a, our, our Jira, which is you know kind of our our project management software, and they're setting up every single ticket for like, okay, well this thing needs to do. We need to get you know this animation, like like Dan was just saying, we need this animation. Well, that's blocked by having the character. Well, that's blocked by a concept for that character. Well, that's blocked by having a design for that character, right? And there's like this big chain of of different tickets that essentially need to be created. And they're doing, I don't know, hundreds, like thousands of these tickets, right? They have like you know so many in the backlog and stuff like that. That process has been surprisingly smooth because that part of the that part of the um, that part of the development cycle is actually quite daunting. Like just saying, okay, here's this here's this game I want to make. What's everything I need for that game? You know, and they're not doing every single thing all the way through. But yeah, so I would say that for me, that's been super surprisingly easy. Like that communication has has been great. Like, uh, what about you, Brad? What What do you think has been has been uh, easier or harder than than maybe you thought it was going to be? Um, harder probably keeping everything organized and current. That is, um, there's just there's so much going on, and there's so many different meetings, and there's so many different people with different thoughts and and working on different things. That keeping everybody in the loop of everything that's happening, and keeping all of the spreadsheets and all of the documents and everything together and cohesive and up to date, based on who like that is that is a really tough skill to to learn and get down. I feel like we do pretty good as a team, but it, it, it's harder than I thought it was going to be. It, it's, it's more daunting, but, but fun. Cause we got, we got a lot going on and it's fun to design it. What about you, Dane? What do you, what do you think? An easier it's daunting of- thing. If only you had found Southeast Asian or Korean studio, then I'd be the one coming in at the end of the <laughs> day, the acting like a hot, a hot <laughs> shit and everyone else would be all waking up. Um, <sighs> There, I think the thing that's difficult in any sort of creative endeavor, especially a large team collaborative endeavor, is the mix between efficiency and art and vision. Because in some ways, especially if I came from a fine art background, I, came, I went to art school and stuff, and, and people would spend months on a single painting you know there's so much you're thinking about you're trying to communicate and you're trying to get just right and well that does sort of exist here but not in the same way but you know but basically at some point stuff just needs to get made 
um, and you're always doing little compromises and every little compromise, especially if you put something out there that you think this is a brilliant design, people are going to love this as it is. And right. then you hand it off and it comes back and it's, it dies the death of a thousand cuts. <laughs> nothing, nothing is inherently overall this, wrong, mm -hmm. but it, there's like a bunch of little things that are quite wrong. When you add them all together, like, well, it's not the same thing. And, and then they're like, well, you know, it's close enough and we want to get, we want to move on to the, the next thing. And sometimes you have to say, yeah, it is close enough. It is my particular vision isn't so crucial to the project because it's not like an indie game that's like, uh, I don't know, please don't remark, report me or letters, please. So, you know, that word, oh, yeah. game. Letter. That, that that's like so contingent on one person's vision that nothing can go astray but in a bigger game like this with tons of content um yeah you, you let go of some of that stuff and i think the challenge is like well what when do you step and say no 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 even though this this could ship and it still looks good because magic media does good stuff it's not close enough and we need, want to spend the extra time no time's like eh, this is an alternatively good vision if it's in our game, ship it. Let's go. Yep. Next, yeah, next. We got a lot to do, um, and that's a challenge, you know. Because other stuff I've worked on, it's been more the former. It's like, okay, it's going to be exactly how we say or nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's my um, way or the highway. But yeah, and, and, and th that's that's a that's a really good shout out because I, I think that um, I think that yeah, because of the size of this project and because we do need to get so many characters done, it's like. One of the things that, that I, I guess I've had to learn is how to really let go of, of things and and delegate. And, and that, that doesn't mean like I'm letting go. I'm, I'm saying like, OK, well, this person is now going to going to own it. And then and then it's over. Obviously, it'll still come through and we need to figure out, hey, does it fit the vision and whatever. But. But that's been that's pretty that's pretty hard to to do, like you said, coming from coming from like, you know, what we were doing with Incarnate, where it was just like, well, it's just this is what we, we're doing exactly this. There's nothing there's there's no there's no wiggle room here. It's just exactly the way that we that we pictured it with this. It's like, oh, wow, that's actually a really cool like you have a different perspective and you came back with something that was like from the Magic Media side or even from other collaborators that are working with us. Right. Um you came back with something that's very interesting and then really what's what's allowed me personally to kind of like move on to to delegate that is that is seeing how passionate and you know good at their jobs everyone is kind of a, you know you know on, on the project like i've just seen so many really cool things like like uh i know there's a i know simon has a video coming out pretty soon uh where esther did did a a, a or, well spoilers but one of our artists did something really cool or do, is doing something something really cool and you know to see to see her work and, and and her vision is really cool and then to see it from you know like like brad coming in with some of some of his ideas um you know coming from like a starcraft background and, and you know all these are arpgs i think we end up what let, let me let it go was that we really end up with something that's just better like i i come up with an idea and i'm like yeah like like Dane's saying, like yeah, this is the best idea. This is so good. This is perfect. everyone's gonna love this. It's so good. And then so immediately we get into the meeting, and it's like, but what about this? And I'm like, shit, good point. Um, and I, and I, and, I, and but, usually I'll have at least thought of like the first eight questions, and I'm like, yeah, but what about this? And you know, I have an answer for it. And then as we're going, I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, actually, I see maybe it should actually be more like this. And then so, and then you know, Ash will come in and he'll say something, and we'll be like, oh wow, that's actually completely different perspective but we really like that right like like we just talked we just talked through masteries and ash i would say was kind of like he came up with what i would say is the root idea for our mastery system and that's pretty cool you know so yeah um, i'll shut up for a minute it's something that you oh you're good it's something that you learn really quick when you work in design because you'll uh you'll work on something for four or five hours and you're like okay i've got this this is pristine and then as soon as you go into a meeting with people, they're like, dude, what are you thinking? What what is this? Like, like, <laughs> why did you make like change this? And and then this person says, dude, what's up with this? And you're like, wait, what? Why didn't I think of that? Like, mm -hmm. and so it's that's why it's so important to get different perspectives. Uh, because when you're just one mind and, fo and and one focus, sometimes you get you can miss things. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, th- I think that's one thing that's really neat about having, say, Simon and uh, Dan, Hell Hades and Fiction, on the project. Because there are times when we get work back, um, especially if it's in response to notes we've given towards, say, character or level design. We even talk about environments and stuff, too. That's a huge thing, too. You know, in it's the own thing, work. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's huge. And, um, okay, every level in Japan can't be a sky bridge with temples down inside the volcano. What, you know, fine. It looked cool if you don't think about it. But having spoilers, Simon, spoilers. <laughs> well, I was talking about Neo too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I love that game. Um, <laughs> the same and Di- uh, Simon and Dan, not Sam and Diane um, <laughs> from Cheers. <laughs> Neo heard Ryan. his name, Dirk. Neo heard his name. You woke him up. <laughs> oh, sorry. There he is. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> they, I think anytime you take something you're passionate about and make it your job, you run that risk of starting to hate that thing <laughs> you know this is not exclusive to game development or anything it could be interior design or any cutting hair i don't know whatever it, you always run that risk you get very cynical you you, you everything is, is production it's work it's numbers it's money and um obviously simon is in the the creator sphere and understands all that stuff but he hasn't really made a game before and a lot of times you see stuff and it's still so cool to him. Like he gets to see it kind of fresh. Like I look at something and I immediately, even all the things that are good, I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, push those to the side. Don't right. worry about that. What do I need to improve? <laughs> yeah. My job is not to like congratulate successes. My job is to fix all the problems. And so you only start visualizing things like that. And uh, Dan and Simon look at things and just be um, elated with a new bit that could be in the game and that people get to experience. That'd be fun. And that is a, I wouldn't say refreshing because nothing refreshes me. I'm not like that. Nothing refre- nothing it refreshes is, it me. is a, a, a encouraging signal that yeah. we're on the right path because someone who's not, I'd say a bit cynical through game development um, and world weary, World where in, in, in their later years, you would think that Dane is like eighty five. <laughs> yeah, it's been so long yeah. working in the in the mines in the mine shaft when where I had to mine every day. Yep. Well, mine. there there is truth to what he says, though. Uh, you know, being a content creator for so many years, with like from my perspective, it, it it's like it's hard for me to kind of enjoy a game because I'm constantly thinking, like, am I going to do content on this? And if not, I'm kind of wasting my time. I should be playing something I'm going to do content on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it does kind of dilute it a little bit. Uh, and, it, and it's definitely a different dynamic than opposed to when I was just a gamer. And I, like, I don't care if I'm going to do content. I just want to play. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it, it definitely changes it a little bit. Yeah, it's it, it, it's funny. That, that that's, a, that's a good point with like the, the different perspective and people coming in. I mean, and that's and that's, I think, why the way we've built the studio, you know, ourselves on the back a little bit is 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 a really know, just great great way to do it like we have because we, we have people that know what they're doing their experience in, in building a game then we have people that are experts in the specific genre that we're that we're kind of like like building and so they can come in with a very critical eye on from the perspective of almost like a not even almost but from the player from the community base and they can and they can say oh well you know if i were a player i would be complaining about this and this and this and i wouldn't really like this and it's like and it's like, oh yeah, that, that that perspective is huge. But but yeah, to Dane's point, having people come in and see, you know, okay, well, how how mesh deformity works for the first time, and how and how like uh you know taking a character uh from you know this T pose to rigged to animated to you know like VFX and 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 have like the the audio stuff going and the mechanics working like in engine and being able to that's that's it's it's awesome. It, it does. It does refresh me. Okay, Dane, I'll I'll, I'll say it. It refreshes can, me. I'm not, I hope balance. it refreshes you. You can be Dane. innervated. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's great, I mean, it, and it is always worth bearing in mind because the, your players are not game design, game development experts, um, and they don't care about a lot of this stuff. And all the triple I, I play triple A stuff. I, I'm I'm a plebe, and there's plenty of times where I look at something. I'm like, that made it through. A plebe. I've never heard someone say plebe. Like a plebeian. A plebeian. Yeah, towards. I've heard pleb. 
Well, um, but then people are <laughs> like, oh, you mean a plebeian? Oh, right. I'm like, well, no, of course not. No one would say that. The, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you look through stuff, I'm like, that is some, that is a jank ass bit of costuming in Horizon going west or whatever like this billion dollar game I'm yeah. like how'd that get through because so much of that is like they're probably just like uh sure but, just we got we sure right yeah <laughs> but then it gives you a, sometimes you you're like you know what i can let some of this stuff go through so players aren't really gonna notice or care right right it's and like yeah it like, like, like the, the details under a skirt like if you turn Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. But details under the skirt. Are you so <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. Don't twist my words, Dane. We're talking Hello. about we're talking about uh, costuming and design. We're not talking right. about anything else. Back armor underneath a cape. Let's yes. say. Um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that I wouldn't. Even games I love, that I'd be like, that looks not great. But it's only because I'm being nitpicky and I'm looking for it because you're in game development. Um, and I think so, having some like Simon and Dan look at it a bit more like, oh, it's just cool that this works. This and sweet. It. Yeah. yeah. And, and we look at something like we look at a character in T pose. I'm like, yeah, I already know what she's going to look like in a pose. I can visualize it. We've gone through this. And Simon will look at that character and like, oh, she's so awkward. It's awful to see in T pose. And then it's like, oh, like the angel chorus happens and the <laughs> god beams come down. <laughs> And yeah, all the character works. And you don't want to be so cynical, you know, and be like, yeah, I know. That's that was the next step where we're getting there. Right, right. You, you just kind of let it, you know, and it, obviously we have a lot of game left to do. Simon will be extremely well uh, immersed and educated on all these processes, as will we all. He's doing some but, design, man. He's getting in there like the rest of us. He's got he's got some tickets. Uh, that he's had to take care of. So, yeah, yeah I mean, th- yeah. Th- he's a busy guy, but yeah, he is adding a lot of input. And I think Magic Media, you know, obviously his experience in the genre is crucial to this whole project. So that weighs heavily too. And especially in a lot of the map progression, um, you know, battle staging and, and even the new stuff, uh, not new, but let's say like genre differentiating there's a different term for that. Um, Defining, uh, maybe. No, there's like a little like acronym for like point of sale type. Oh, thing. the differentiator. Yeah, like it's, it's a an aspect of commercial viability. Blah blah blah. Point. It's it's three letters. I'm, I'm blanking on it too. I, yeah, I, I no. know exactly what you're talking about. But you know what I'm talking about. Now that you yeah. started to try to trick me into saying it, like, <laughs> the pro- like, I do this like, with my girlfriend all the time. I'll I'll say it enough that she starts to also remember, and then I'll add so many red herrings that she'll like, never remember. No, it. If you just stopped, I could have said it. <laughs> this is like a celebrity different names. cheaters. Different yeah. Cheaters. Well, see, now I threw myself off. Um, what are we talking about? Damn it, <laughs> Jane, How old are you? Hold on a second. Is this? Maybe you are older than we think. Eighty-two, you. as we Eight, said. Oh shoot! Okay, that's that's right. I forgot. I forgot. You yeah, actually, those I, I drink organ organ fat blood. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm blanked. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah, that it's gone matter. forever. But but well, so you know this uh, this bout of dementia uh, mm-hmm. is <laughs> it's probably a decent time for us to to kind of wrap it up. And talk through like uh maybe any last thoughts on on where we where we are if there's anything that we are... also um gdc you know uh, oh, yeah. yeah at least at least you know for a couple minutes yeah we are uh we're gonna be headed a few of us are gonna be headed out to uh to california to uh to go to this year's gdc and we'll be leaving in about a week just over a week some somewhere around a week um and then and then the week after that we will be in california a few of us and we're we're thinking about trying to line up a uh like a a place to go to for a couple hours to let people pop in and say hi if anybody's in the area and, and wants to. So we'll definitely keep an eye out for that for sure. Come hang out, get a beer, come chat with us. We'd love to see you. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll you know we'll watch the socials. I'm not sure exactly where you know, Dan and Simon kind of mostly take care, and, and Brad actually uh, mostly take care of that. So uh, just watch those. We'll have we'll have announcement on where we're gonna be, um, and then yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna be there, let us know on Discord. Um, yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to to come and and uh, or, or we'd love to see you guys and and kind of like thank you guys for everything that you do. Honestly, like for 
this community that you're that you're a part of. So come say hi and yeah, GDC is going to be awesome. I mean, we we could we didn't really we didn't really leave that much time to talk about GDC, but um, I think that when we wrap up GDC, it would be a good one to talk about because there's there's going to be there's going to be a lot of stuff that, uh, that that we're really excited about. Hopefully, we'll we'll meet some people that'll inspire us to do something really cool in the game or 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 get connected with them, and for we'll be able to get some footage to show people from our experiences and and yeah. chatting and all that. And we'll do a we'll do a fun blog type of video and a podcast and all that. Go. Yeah. yeah. So if there's anything else we want to, we want to say, uh, let's, let's say it, but otherwise I feel like, you know, in general, we're on track. We are, we were feeling good. The The process is, is kind of like speeding up as we kind of, you know, will we need it to right for us to, to realistically hit our targets, but it's moving at the, at the pace that, that I'm, I was expecting maybe a little bit faster, some places, maybe a little slower other places, but it'll all kind of hopefully even out and, as we get closer and closer, we'll we'll start to be able to let you let you guys know like what the timelines are, are for the different you know m- more important milestones like al- you know closed alpha, closed beta, all the different things you know along the way to 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 release and getting people really playing this game. So yeah, heck yeah. Okay, yeah. well yeah, thanks for joining me, guys, and appreciate all of you for tuning in to this week's Fateless Podcast episode. We'll see you soon in the next one. All the links to interact with us on Discord and ask questions and be a part of the project will be down there as well. So thanks. Have a good one. We'll yes. see you. Yep. Yeah.